One of the best things about Last Epoch is how easy it is to respect your hero build for only taking a few minutes at late game. Now, for this reason, many people will run a fast leveling build from levels 1 to 80 before switching to their main build at that point. So, for today's video, we'll show off the fastest way to level the Beastmaster Mastery from level 1 to 80. The specific leveling guide it will be a hybrid build making use of Swipe and lots of wolves, and it's one of my personal favourite leveling builds. Before we do go in, and we start breaking it all down. There are three other videos on the channel that if you've not watched them will help out here. The first is the best fixes for minion builds. We then have how to auto cast skills and finally the last one is the fastest way to reach level 100. This is essentially a experience guide. So let's go in and let's start breaking all this down now. We start off here then with a general progression setup for this build and where possible in most of my videos I'll actually try and use infographics so it means that you can take a screenshot of a page in question that perhaps has a lot of information on it to save you having to scrub through the video again in future but this is a general progression. So at level 1 you'll have your summon wolf unlocked straight away so you want to get that out, you want to use auto cast as well on your wolf once it's summoned and that means it will then cast howl and that really ups the damage on it. At level 3 you'll add fury leap to your bar, that's a nice movement ability. At level 4 you'll spec into summon wolf and later on in the video I'll talk about exactly how you spec into that particular tree as well as the other ones. At level 5 you add swipe to your bar, this will be your main spender so you'll now be a hybrid build, you'll be doing damage through your wolves and through your swipe as well. At level 9 we'll add warcry to your bar, it doesn't do much until we add specialisation but once we do it becomes really amazing. At level 16 you'll unlock the beastmaster mastery. Level 20 you'll spec into Fury Leap and that can be used to buff your wolves as well as yourself. At level 35 you'll spec into Warcry, this becomes really nice for actually buffing your own damage. And then you'll add Summon Frenzy Totem to your bar when you have 25 points into the Beastmaster Mastery. And finishing up here you'll then spec into Frenzy Totem. So that's a quick overview of the general progression for the build. Let's go ahead and let's look at some gear that you want to look out for. The difference that good early game gear can make in your character, even at low level, is pretty incredible and you'll gain access to your stash as early as level 4 via the Keeper's Camp. Now, if this is your first character, then of course you won't have most of the gear pieces we will show off here, but you can keep an eye out for them in future. If you've run a few characters before, then you want to go into your stash and see if you've got any of the gear pieces we're about to highlight here. With the gear pieces here, there are actually quite a lot that can help out with leveling with this build. Now for that reason, I'll bring up the tooltip for the gear piece. I'll tell you at what level you can equip it, but I won't break down the modifiers. So for your weapon, you've got Harfanon's Vow. This can be equipped at level 1. This is fantastic. You've got Bearded Axe. This is a base item and it's got nice implicit. So that's equipped at level 21. And then you've got Beast King. You get this later on, but it can be nice if you're struggling for a weapon for them. So that would be equipped at level level 46. For this next item here we have one that is relatively rare and it is equipable at level 50 so you're not getting a massive amount of value out of it for this specific guide however it fits in perfectly with our setup due to how strength actually works on it. It's the Bastion of Honour. This is once again equipable at level 50. For the helmet we've got three different options here. You have Wolf Pelt, this is a base that implicit and this works really nice with us. We've then got Last Bear's Lament, this is more for a Druid setup but it actually works on this setup as well and it's equipable from level 20 so if you have one of these it can be worth putting on in the short term. Ideally you would be looking for Arthur's Legacy at level 44, this is perfect for this leveling setup. We have quite a few nice options here for the amulet slot. Firstly, you've got the claw. This is perfect for you. This is equipable at level 4. If you don't have the claw for any reason, then you can use the bleeding heart for some survivability. This is also equipable at level 4. In regards to a decent base item, this is again if you don't have the claw, because the claw really is perfect. You've got the turquoise amulet, equipable at level 36. And then finally, you've got the fang at level 58. This is essentially an upgraded version of the claw. 
We have three items here with the body armor. Starting off, we have the Doublet of Honest Towel at level 5, great for minion setups. You've got Uzrael's Pride that can give you some survivability at level 15. And then lastly, you have Last Bear Scorn, which is equipable at level 27. We have two items here for the belt slot. Firstly, you've got the Thorn Slinger. This is equipable at level 12 and it's a common drop. The next one, good luck getting this. I've only seen one in 600 hours, but I'll put it down here anyway because it can help out. It's Jungle Queen's Chaps. This is equipable at level 14. With the ring slot here, we start off with the Arboreal Circuit, equipable at level 1. This is an amazing low-level unique. I've talked about this in so many videos. We then have the base of the Turquoise Ring, equipable at level 31. Nice implicits for us. And then finally, you've got the Ribbons of Blood. That's level 53. With this, your minions can't be crit. So this is amazing for the survivability. We have a unique and a set item here with the glove slot. You've got Stormhide gloves equipable at level 6. These can give you a nice boost to swipe. And then you have Last Bear's Fury. That's another piece of that set that's more geared towards a druid but works with us as well. That's equipable at level 31. For the boots, we have the Weaver's Will item. This is Advent of the Erased, equipable at level 16. And these can be a nice buff to your minions. They can provide them with both Frenzy and Haste. We have quite a few nice bases here for the Relic. You've got Dreamcatcher at level 1, you have Sage Antler at level 4, Living Seed is level 11, and then you've got a unique item. This once again is Weaver's Will. So this is a raised Primalist, and that's level 30 for that one, and that's got a nice minion buff on it. Finishing up the gear here, we'll have a look at some useful idol affixes. So your small idol, you can get shared physical damage on this. Your humble idol can give you vitality and shared physical damage again. Large idol is a chance to heal minion on melee kill and also increase minion damage. Your ornate idol would give you vitality and increase minion melee attack speed. Adorned idol is increased minion melee attack speed. Grand idol is minion critical strike chance. And then finally, you have the huge idol, which is minion cooldown recovery speed and also increased minion melee damage. Now, that's all the gear to look out for. So next up, let's check out the useful blessings. For this section here then we'll have a look at some of your useful blessings that are available in your normal timeline. Starting off you've got Fall of the Outcasts, that can give you up to 6% additional experience. Reign of the Dragons is quite a few nice options so I'll leave it down to what you go for. But you've got Minion All Resistances, Critical Strike Avoidance and you've got All Resistances for yourself as well. You've then got Spirit of Fire that can give you up to 60% increased Minion damage. So a nice simple section that one, let's go on now and let's start breaking down the passive trees. For this section here then I'll show off the order I would allocate my points. Now you need to put 20 points into the Primalist class before you can go into the Beastmaster one. So I would place 8 points into Primal Strength. Strength works incredibly well on our character and it buffs our wills as well. We then have 6 points going into Gift of the Wilderness. This gives us additional health and it gives our minions increased health. And then our final 6 points go into survival of the pack. That's increased melee damage, melee damage leached his health and the same applies to our minions. So that's great that one. So nice and simple. Let's look at the Beastmaster tree now. We start off in the Beastmaster tree then with Ursine Strength. We put the full 8 points into that. Strength is fantastic in this setup. It gives us damage, our wills damage and also buffs our armour. On top of that as well with this particular node, damage taken from nearby enemies is reduced by a whopping 16%. We have a point in each of these nodes here because we will go further along the tree in just a moment. For some defence in our character, we have 5 points into Boar Heart. We then have 5 points into Porcine Constitution, and what this does is when Boarheart is active, it gives us additional damage reduction, so that's pretty amazing. Down here, we'll be getting some damage for our build, so this is Rending Maw. When we have Aspect of the Shark active, and we'll have it active with near enough 100% uptime, we will be shredding armor. 
the node that gives us the uptime on that is Hunters of the Deep. So that gives you the 100% uptime on aspect of the shark and it makes it apply to your wills as well. So your armor shred stacks will go through the roof on this. We then have five points into Axe and Claw that gives us base physical damage for ourselves and our wills. And then we have five points going into Boar Heart so we can actually buff that. So we get the, the chance of aspect of the Boar and Melee hit and we get additional strength as well. The next node we have here is a fantastic one point wonder. This is life in the wilderness. So with this particular one, our endurance also applies to our companions as well. Another great one point wonder is nature's embrace. It gives us an additional wolf that really ramps up our damage. We have eight points into cry of the lynx. This will increase the critical strike chance for ourselves. And also we put the full six points into serrated claws. This increases crit multiplier for ourselves and our wolves. We have 10 points into Ancient Might, giving us an additional 10 strength and also flat physical damage for ourselves and our minions. With 8 points left, there's a few options here for you. If you want a bit more damage and attack speed for your minions, you can go for this one here. Alternatively, if you need a bit more survivability, you can put 5 points into Call of the Pack and then the remaining 3 points there into Lamprey Teeth. Now, the reason you still have 20 points left after doing that is this guide is to take you from level 1 to 80, not level 1 to 100. But that is the passive trees. Let's have a look at the skill trees now. Our first skill that we look at here is Summon Wolf. Now starting off we want to get to the left hand side of this tree so we place two points into Savage Hunters it gives us an additional 30% more damage. Three points into Tundra Stalkers we don't really need this or this particular node here but we really want this one Pack Hunters. This gives us an additional companion that allows you to get up to your six wolves maximum. From here we have four points going into On the Hunt. It's given us a nice bonus but the reason we're placing the four points there is so we can get to how of the might which is amazing so it's 40% more damage and dodge rating and this is tripled when your wolves howl so that goes up to 120% for both of them and that's more rather than increased so that is amazing from there with patch 1.0 this is changed so it's only one point we put into it but it frees up some other points the values on it do drop down a little bit but I like the fact we only have to invest one point into it now so we've got four points left what I like to go for is victory howl so wolves have a chance to howl on kill this does not expend howl's mana cost or put it in cooldown and that's a 30% chance and bear in mind when they howl you get this bonus over here that's giving us the additional 80% more damage and dodge rate on top of what you're already getting from it with one point left I would be pretty simple here and I'd put it into savage hunters that's an additional 15% more damage that's always a nice multiplier the next skill we specialise in here would be Swipe. So we start off with two points into Way of the Hunt. We have one point into this node here because it then allows us to put two points into Killing, which gives us the kill threshold of 14%, which is fantastic on bosses. We have the full five points going into Aspect of the Panther here. That increases the stacks up to five and gives us 5% global damage per stack. We then have Wild Calling. This particular one we put three points into it, so we've got a 45% chance to summon Spirit Wolves when we hit an enemy. We have one point into Feline Hunter here, and then we have two points going into Line Strength. That gives us additional Panther stacks and global melee damage per stack as well. Now at this point, you've got four points left. What you could do is place them into this node here so you're doing more damage and the area of swipe is larger, or you could place your points into Way of the Hunt. It will give you more damage, but it'll give you some health leech as well. So do you need more health, or would you rather swipe hits in a larger area? The next skill we have here is Fury Leap. It can do decent damage, but we're using it for some pretty awesome buffs. So you want to spam this very often in order to get those buffs. The buffs come from Warrior's Entrance, so you're gaining global melee damage that applies to your minions as well. That's for three seconds after you leap. You should be able to get the cooldown on it round about that, so you can constantly have this buff up. Next up here, we have Pack Leader. Using this, you can keep your wolves up with you. Sometimes they do lag behind a little bit. 
We have one point into Frenzied Onslaught, so we're gaining Frenzy after we leap. We move over here, we'll put the full four points into Pan for Stripe. The damage is nice, but also with this, you've got your cooldown recovery speed, so you can use it more often to keep the buff up. We have five points going into Ambush Predator, because this particular one is more damage, so that's a huge multiplier there, 150%. And then we have one point into Gravity, so Fury Leap pulls enemies when you land, so you'll leap, you'll get the buff, you pull the enemies towards you, and you'll have your Will Sleep with you as well. Amazing combination there. Now you get three points left. If you need a little bit of survivability on your wolves, what you can do is you can put three points into here, Wings of Endurance. So when you land, you and your minions are healed as well. For the fourth specialization here, we have Warcry. This is fantastic for buffing both our own damage and our wills as well. Now, starting off with head up here, we have Battle Cry. This can give us increased crit chance of 100% for four seconds when we cast Warcry, and that affects ourselves and the wills. We have one point and two Frosty, so we've got a chance of casting Warcry again when it is on cooldown and we crit. Moving down here, we have a fantastic buff for herself. This is the Berserker buff. We want to max out the points associated with this because it gives you a huge amount of damage and it gives you an absolute insane attack speed boost as well. And the more you're attacking, of course you're doing more damage, but you're leeching more damage back, so it's actually giving you survivability in a roundabout way. With three points left, personally what I would go for is two into this one here. We don't want the knockback distance, but we want this here, apprehend, so we pull the enemies in. And when we looked at Fury Leap earlier on, when we're leaping, we'll be pulling our wills with us, so our wills should always be close by. So if we use Warcry, we're buffing ourselves, buffing our wills, pulling enemies towards us, and then we can just absolutely smash them. The final specialization we have here is Summon Frenzy Totem. This can really up the damage for yourself and your wolves. Now, starting off, we have three points into this node here. This actually increases the frenzy effect that you get from the totem. We have five points into Bestial Frenzy for a nice amount of flat physical damage. Five points into Lead the Pack. This means when we use Howl, we get an even better critical strike chance from it. One point into Furious Cry. So when we summon our totem, it will refresh the cooldown on Howl. And you've got all the buffs that are associated with it. From there, there's a few options you can go for. If you find your totems are getting destroyed quite quick, you can put some points, or you can put five points even, into Reinforced Totem. We do have enough points there. Alternatively, if you really want to ramp up the damage that your wolves do, rather than yourself, we would put three points in here. Let's actually do it now, just so you can see it. You've got one additional point in here, and then we've got a point going in there as well. So it's symbol of selflessness. So Frenzy Totem's buffs are more effective, but Frenzy Totem now affects only companions. So it's up to you what you do after we've put the, the points into this particular node here, and we've got six points left. Finishing up this section then we have another infographic and the skills you can see here in the order that the nodes are listed is the order that I would recommend investing points in. So you've got your Summon Wolf, then you've got Swipe, from there you've got Fury Leap, you have Warcry and then you finish up with Frenzy Totem. So that there really is everything you need to know about leveling the Beastmaster Mastery from level 1 to 80 in record time. Now I do have videos for the other Mastery classes as well, so if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check them out. And also if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a comment and hit like as well, because that certainly helps out a ton. But thanks for tuning in for this one, stay safe, I'll see you all again soon.